Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com. And welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. Of course, I'm glad to have you guys along with us for the next fun-filled hour as Ashley will be creating and drawing for you this evening. We're right in the middle of season 11. And for those of you who don't know what we do here, besides being incredibly sketchy people ourselves, uh, we also try to create a drawing for you guys inside of 45 minutes and sprinkle a little bit of entertainment and also some art instruction in there for you as well. And Ashley, as I said, is gonna be doing the drawing tonight. He's sitting right over there. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking and thank you for joining us. I hope you're excited to draw along with me tonight. The materials are simple, just pencils, so no excuses. Everybody draws tonight. Uh, well, it, you don't have to draw if you don't want to. Okay, you don't. You, you can, can just walk and enjoy, totally enjoy yeah. the show. Totally, and then maybe draw when we're done, or maybe you can draw tomorrow. Just whenever <laughs> you feel like it, right? Whenever you feel inspired. Which I've heard the comment before that um about inspiration prof professional artists don't they they don't deal with they don't have time to wait for inspiration right but because, i hope they find inspiration right they don't look for inspiration yeah because you know as a professional you have to just work no matter what that's true um i realize that you guys might not be professionals but you're maybe aspiring and some professionals yeah. so um anyway i don't know where i'm going with this uh, <laughs> but <laughs> if you are watching this live of course there is a chat box you can post comments and questions. If you do have a comment or question that's specifically directed at Ashley or myself, if you will use the super chat function, not only will that help out our channel financially, but it'll also make your comment or question prominent amongst all the other ones. And we have a little silly, stupid animation that we play too for that <laughs> as well. Um, uh, Ashley already went over the materials. What am I forgetting? Just briefly. Oh, I'm forgetting the membership program. Oh, oh yes. yes. Of course. Uh, <laughs> there's a membership program over at the virtualinstructor.com, uh, which includes uh, lots of courses on drawing and painting, covering a variety of subject matter and media. We do weekly live lessons there. So uh, they're a bit, bit different from these getting sketchy episodes. We do longer complete pieces of artwork over several weeks and we're in the middle of a scratch board series right now which i will be continuing with after we're done with this live show tonight there are uh, weekly critiques as part of the members minute uh, i think there we're approaching nearly 500 of those critiques and there's a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers as well uh, that includes everything you need to teach for an entire year as a teacher. All, all the resources, of the resources mm. all of the videos, all of the handouts, all of the tests, and so on. All of that is included in the membership program. If you want to check out the membership program, there's a link in the description below. Everyone starts out with a week-long trial for free. And then on top of that, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. And the pricing is very, very inexpensive, especially when you consider what all you get with the program. Um, of course, we would encourage you to check that out as well. Uh, if you want to get on our mailing list and check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, there's a link in the description below for that as well. Um, you ready to go? I think that's it. Yeah, we'll switch over and talk just a little bit about more, more about our materials and paper, paper size. I know there's some questions about that. And, uh, and and we'll take a look at our reference and talk a little bit about that, and then we'll start drawing. Okay. Well, All right. Let's sounds do it. Sounds like a plan. So uh, let's go ahead and switch over, and uh, Ashley will take us through this wonderful journey here. All right. If you hear some extra noise, I'm just moving the microphone around a little bit. He is. For those of you who want to know, he is now standing up. <laughs> That's right. I changed positions. I don't positions. know how. If you're going to stand up, you could. Are you going to stand up? Or I'm not sure, but he's I, antsy. He's antsy. He's got ants in his pants. It's because the cameras. Um, there's a different camera for the paper, <laughs> and then there's a different camera for where I need to sit. Right. Where I need to sit in a slightly different place. So I have to. 
Yeah, yeah, there are four cameras. Right. So I've got to I've got to move over like eighteen inches from the beginning of the show to draw. <laughs> and sometimes I stand, and sometimes I just move our rolling chair around. So Matt, hopefully the microphone isn't in the way of our side shot. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. In we'll a test it in a second, uh, <laughs> and I can move the microphone. I blame again. the uh, the engineer of photography. Definitely. Uh, or filming engineer mm -hmm. for that. Uh, for that having to shift around and I stuff. blame him for everything. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna fire him tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna be using, or I'm gonna be using Kimberly pencils, and I've got a two H, an HB, and a two B, and I'll probably just take the HB out. I'll we'll probably just use a two H to get started. If it doesn't look like it's showing up well on the on the feed, then I'll switch to the HB for our initial sketch. So, so we are. Drawing. Did you say two B or not two B? Two B. 2B. Or, or not 2B. I have a 4H. Oh, a 4H. Okay. No. All right. I got you. All right. So I'm also probably going to use the kneaded eraser a little bit. I've just got a piece of it. And I also have a, a white nylon eraser, just a half of an eraser, because I, I cut all my erasers in half. And besides that, our paper is white sulfite drawing paper. And the, the piece of paper is 8 inches by 10 inches, but I've got it taped down overlapping almost a half an inch around the side. So it's it's more like seven inches by nine inches, or maybe just a little bit bigger than that. Now you'll notice the reference is in a square. And so we won't really be using the edge of the picture plane like we sometimes do to help start to lay out our sketch, like how far away the fingers are from the edges. So we're just gonna be using the proportions inside the hand um, itself uh, to help us figure out um, where it belongs on the page and if it's too big or too small. But I think this will be plenty of room. Should be able to draw close to a life-size hand. Oh, that hand but, looks familiar. That looks just looks, like your hand. Looks, hey, looks, speaking of this, uh, <laughs> speaking of this, this uh, reference, Yeah, I, I knew I forgot something. Okay. Uh, the, the photo reference is available under the community tab on the YouTube channel for the virtual instructor. You may be watching this video, but not be on the channel if you mm. click on the little icon of my face in the lower left-hand corner, which is going to change soon, it's still going to be my face. If you click on that, that will go to the YouTube channel. And from there, you can find the community tab, and then you will find the photo reference, and you can download it for yourself. Now, there's some in the chat, they, there's some comments that I've missed your pun about to be or not to no, be. No, you didn't miss it. I didn't it. miss you it. Just Matt, didn't makes laugh it. At it. Matt makes it every week. It, it's pretty much every week. Every time I draw with pencils. So <laughs> I guess... <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm just worn down. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Uh, I didn't say anything about 4-H Club. Though, that's right. You know, that's right. I, Those are the two pencils we can make jokes left about. That one the 2B go. and the 4-H. Yeah. So, and I never fail to make those same puns in my classroom when we're going over our pencil continuum. You're Nobody right. knows what 4-H is anymore, hardly. So, yeah, the, the, my, four, the club. Yeah, my kids miss that one every time. Yeah, so. that's uh, yeah. All right. So, um, so the hand is, I did pose myself, my left hand pose for this image. And uh, your left hand is always available. And of course, I'm talking to right-handed folks right now. And it's not very good at doing anything, except it do it holds still better than it does anything else because of the lack of coordination. So I think the left hand is a perfect model. It's never busy. And of course, if you're left-handed, your, your right hand can serve as a perfect model because it usually isn't doing very much. Um, the hand is a subject that filled my own sketchbooks up, hands and eyes, right? When I was learning to draw a long, long time ago in the land far away, Virginia. And uh, so I, had, I, I practiced a lot um, drawing hands uh, only because of its availability. So I thought it would be a good exercise. And it's a question I get a lot in the art room. Uh, I find sometimes students tr will avoid certain subjects because of because there are hands. And so we don't, we don't want to we want to be able to express ourselves in in any way we imagine we ought to and and not let subject matter hold us back so we're going to stick with the hand tonight um we're going to look at it in, in its geometry we're going to think about it as a single shape and then we're going to look at some of the negative shapes that are made from the single shape and that's kind of how we're going to start so i'm kind of planning to work uh, in, in three stages just a general shape and then work on the contour lines but to um, emphasize the geometry a little bit, the boniness, maybe make some of the angles a little bit sharper where they meet, and then, uh, and then we'll work for more realistic contours. We'll see how long that takes, and we'll, then we'll shade ourselves out to 45 minutes and, uh, and see where we're at 
with the application of value. You know, there's a lot of range of value in here, and there's some distinct areas where the light meets the shadow. Um, we'll see how much of the nuance we can capture in the shading, but we'll at least establish where the light's coming from um, on the form of the hand after we finish our contour drawing. So I guess that's it. I guess that's kind of my plan. It, sort of four steps, four steps. It sounds like a good plan. All right. Um, yeah, we knew it wasn't Matt's hand because there are no Band-Aids. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's good. That's funny, Brenda. Yeah. I should, oh, that's now, now real I've, funny, Brenda. Now I'm, I really missed an opportunity. I should have wrapped a Band-Aid <laughs> around one of my fingers. Well, you know, I like wearing bracelets on my left arm. Mm -hmm. And within the last week and a half, all of them have fallen off, and I don't know what happened to them. And maybe, one of them said Dad on it. Maybe your you know, hand's gotten a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. Maybe my hand's got smaller. And Dale is in the comment section talking about his uh, soapstone sculpture. So oh, yeah. I went to go check it out on the community forums at the virtual instructor. And Dale, I am quite impressed. This is a pretty, pretty cool sculpture. It's very Henry Moore-esque. Um, oh, and, really? Yeah, oh, I'd and, like to, I want to see those. Yeah, I'll show it to you in a little okay. bit. Um, if, but like you were, you're cheating. <laughs> you're cheating. Matt was looking away from the screen. I started drawing. Yeah, I'm, I need to start the timer. <laughs> So we will start the timer 45 minutes. All right, there and we you go. You can go. Okay. So I've already got one pretty pretty sharp or strong angle in here, uh, pretty straight uh, for such an organic subject matter. We're going to pretend like the hand is in a mitten right now, or it's in a sock. And so I'm just going to draw it all like it's one solid connected shape, thinking about the knuckle, you know, the knuckles and the fingers as all being um, connected to one another for right now. So that's what I'm looking at. So you may just want to watch for a, a, a moment just to see what in the world is going on here. Um, and there is some discussion about losing passion for drawing in the comments here in the chat box. Oh. Um, and what do you do if you lose your passion for drawing? Is it forever? Have you met people who regained passion for drawing? Hmm. Well, the truth of the matter is, and I'm just going to uh, tell you my own experiences with things. Um, I find that uh, I get interested in different things at different times. Oh, that's a good And they're not comment. specific times. They're just sometimes I'm more passionate about making art. Sometimes I'm more passionate about making music. I, I'm a drummer. Sometimes I'm more passionate about... Uh, doing some of the sports that I do, it, it really just depends. It ebbs and flows. And mm -hmm. it's just like sometimes you wake up and are in a good mood and you're in a good mood that whole day. And some days you wake up and you're in a bad mood and you're in a bad mood the whole day. Um, it's, it's just something that you kind of flow through. And I don't really think that uh, you, you necessarily lose a passion and it never comes back. I think you just maybe lose interest for a short period of time. And sometimes if you're overexposed to something, that can really cause some of that passion loss. That's a good point. Um, so whenever those things happen, maybe just take a break from those things and don't try to force things too much, but don't take too long of a break because sometimes we, we get that passion back in the act of doing. Uh, some, some days I, I'm... I might not feel like drawing or creating or, or painting. And I, I come to the studio and I start working. And, you know, within 10 or 15 minutes, I'm in it. You're back on. into it. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't I don't think that there's a black and white here. I think there's lots of gray. And um, there's a full range of value. <laughs> uh, I got that one. Yeah, good. Uh, it, there's, there's not a black or white. You're not going to, if you might not feel like drawing for a little while and that's fine. Um, and, um, if it's because you're discouraged at your development, uh, that's probably a bad sign. Uh, if it, if it's just cause you're just not really interested in it right now, that's, that's fine. That it, it'll frustrated. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to work through that and maybe switch and try a different medium, something you've never tried before and give yourself some freedom to make mistakes and not put so much pressure on yourself. You know, um, most of us create art because it is a fun thing to do. And when we start losing... Uh, some of that joy, I right, guess. Right, some of that joy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We start losing some of that and it's not fun anymore. 
um, then it's easy to lose interest. But maybe it's not fun anymore because you're putting too much pressure on yourself. Uh, everything that you make does not have to be uh, world changing. Okay, uh, so uh, just keep that in mind and uh, don't don't let negative feelings or 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 uh, negative thoughts you know, keep you from doing things in life that are worthwhile and uh, rewarding. Yeah, I think sometimes I play out my interests. I get so interested in something that I uh, think about it so much, I've become exhausted from it. Yeah. Because I love yeah. it and I just need little breaks. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I get over, over, ever stimulated is not the right, right word, but uh, overexposed to yeah, things. Yeah, I think sometimes. that's it. It's overexposure. It's self overexposure. All right. So you can see that uh, you know we started with a, a shape of straight of straight lines. Just thinking about maybe the angle between the fingertips, and I made a little adjustment as I was drawing. I, I, I bumped that out. So with each stage the drawing goes through, we're not really bound uh, to the stage that we've done before. You know, each stage that our drawing passes through is an opportunity to make changes. So I already made a little little changes to the the original um, sock that we're imagining the hand is spread out inside of. And you can see over here where we had one solid straight line. Now there's a bend in there um, to sort start to differentiate between the, the knuckle of the middle finger and the, the pinky or small finger that it is overlapped by it. So after the sock phase, I'm looking for um, negative shapes, you know, to carve out these what are pretty much kind of like triangles. This one looks like a shark's tooth, and uh, kind of carve those out um, from the from the sock puppet hand that we started with. Um, Jan, I see your comment. I really appreciate that. Um, and buddy, I see your comment too. I appreciate that too. Um, and uh, just to kind of follow up um, on the comments about the passion. It's the mm -hmm. same person. Um, and they say, you once mentioned that the headache of drawing something is something that never goes away. No, I, not headache. Um, what I was saying with that, and I don't think I used the word headache, uh, but the challenge of drawing never goes away. Uh, no, you, you know, no matter what skill level you're at, Every time you sit down to draw or paint, you're going to be critical of yourself, and you're you're going to have a pretty good understanding of your uh, your own skill level. And if you're creating something that is less than what you think you're capable of, that can be frustrating. And if you're honestly, if you're a good and critical artist, then you're always going to see things that you could have done differently or you should have done differently in everything you create in everything you create, and that will never go away. You will always uh, want to do better, and you will always see areas that uh, where you might consider it a mistake. Um, and you can't allow that to overwhelm you or overcome you uh, because you'll, you'll, you'll eventually quit creating art because you'll essentially become a perfectionist and you cannot be a perfectionist no. and be an artist at the same time. They're, it is too crippling. It will, it will drive you crazy. Um, you have to allow for some, some mistakes. And I'm putting that in quotations, uh, because they're not really mistakes. Uh, but you, you've got to be willing to not be perfect when you draw and paint. Um, and I think that's really what I was alluding to. Uh, that feeling, that angst of wanting to be better never goes away. Um, and I wouldn't consider that a headache. A headache sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, you know, the desire to do better, that will never go away. You, you'll never get to a point where you feel like um, you are a, a perfect artist. Um, and if you do, then you're really not evaluating your art accurately. Yeah. It's always a way to make your art even better, to grow. I really like uh, the way you're approaching this. Thank you. With uh, the mitt, which is really just the outer 
right. the outer boundaries of the hand and, and then using the negative space. To sometimes draw. I go ahead and kind of carve out the thumb in the mitten stage, uh -huh. uh, but this time I kept it all together because there's a it's there's a special negative shape here mm -hmm. that's actually closed uh, due to the coin. So let's get the coin in there and then we'll pause and evaluate proportion. Maybe maybe make some changes. We'll see. All right, so I borrowed this coin from my son. I said, you got some pretty interesting coins, don't you? And uh, I was hoping he would give me one of his silver coins yeah. to use. And he gave me this uh, this other coin from, I think this is from Guatemala, which is a beautiful coin, but not worth as much as the silver coin. You know, I thought it was one of those pirate coins. What do they call those? There's a special name for them. I don't know. There's a special... I'm disappointed thing. i don't know there's a special name for that somebody in the chat box helped me out there's special it's a funny sounding name um maybe i'm just crazy uh, that's probably true too but <laughs> um a token it's not a token it's something like that a is, doubloon it, oh is a it, doubloon is this from Yes. Pirates of Thank the Caribbean. You, Mark. Is this something Thank from Pirates you, Mark. of the Caribbean? I thought your uh, your son had gone to his chest and got out a doubloon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm... oh, here they are. Everybody knows what it is. Doubloon, doubloon, doubloon. Okay. Um, I'm the last to know. Very good. Um, and uh, the person who's asking me about the passion and so on, uh, I think that this is probably relevant to a lot of people who are watching this. So I'm going to continue to talk about it. Okay. But, um, that person goes on to ask, what is something that you can draw effortlessly? And again, I think you're every, everything that you draw a square, maybe requires effort. <laughs> and even if it's a, a very simple setup of basic forms that requires effort. And if you're a beginner, you might look at those basic forms and you might be concentrating on getting the contour lines, right? And that would be considered a victory for you. And that's great. Mm. But as you advance, you might start noticing the shading and the lighting, and you might try to get uh, most of the shading accurate. And that's great. And that might be a victory for you. But when you're more advanced and you've spent many years drawing and painting, uh, getting the contour lines is probably e an easier part of the process. And getting shadows and highlights is probably an easier part of the process, but getting the exact values and the exact gradations and exactly where those gradations take place, um, that's the challenge for you. So I hope you understand what I'm saying here, that no matter what skill level you're at, you're always putting effort into what you're drawing or painting, and it's always a challenge. Just what you consider to be a victory might be different depending on your skill level. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Um, One yeah. part becomes easy and effortless, and it just leads to the next challenge. Yeah, but not effortless. You still yeah. have to put effort into it. Um, it's and still it's, a mental exercise. It's ironic that you are talking about easy things. And then the question is, what's the hardest for both you and Ashley and Matt? It's so ironic it's that funny. you guys are asking this. Yeah, that was our conversation. the video I'm putting out on Tuesday on YouTube it are uh, the, the most difficult subjects to draw along with strategies to, to help you be accurate with drawing those Tackle things. Tackle those, yeah. Um, and for, that video will come out on Tuesday. So I'm not going to reveal what I consider to be the five most difficult subjects to draw. And it, but I will reveal to you that four of them on the list are really things that I consider to be the most difficult things to draw. But one of them on the list is more so what most people think is difficult to draw. So there's some intrigue. But I'm not going to I'm not going to share that right now because I'm going to share that in a video. And then the following week. I'm scheduled to put out a video of the easiest things to draw. Um, so you'll have to wait till Tuesday uh, for me to reveal what I think uh, uh, are the hardest things to draw. Um, can you give them a hint? I can give you a hint. Yeah, I'll give you a hint. I'll, I'll give you one of them. Okay. Okay. Prime the pump a little bit. And here. it's relevant to what we're drawing tonight, and it's the human figure. Yeah. So... 
Uh, the hand is obviously part of the human figure. A lot of people think hands are the most difficult thing to draw. I don't particularly share that, um, but the hands are part of the figure. And I do think figure drawing is one of the most difficult things to draw, but it's also one of the, the best subjects to practice with to improve your overall drawing and painting skills mm -hmm. uh, because you cannot draw a figure using a formula. You, you have to do so through observation in order to get everything accurate. Uh, One so. thing I like to do when I'm drawing hands or human bodies is pretend like I tie a little string to the edges or tips of things, in this case, the middle finger, and then pretend like I pull that string down or across to see how that imaginary string, I'll make that one a little darker, would um, relate to other parts. And so I do the same thing with my pencil over the reference. So I'm also, you can't see it off camera, but I'm holding up my pencil right up against the front of the middle finger to see how much coin is still visible to the left of that imaginary line. So those are some of the things that I check to help me with the placement of these parts that are constantly moving around. You know, every hand drawing is a slightly different experience. So I'm pretty good with, you know, uh, this is a sketch. We've got 30 minutes to, to, uh, to shade this thing in. So I just want to make sure I'm not too far off on a few of those things. Um, and another thing to point out is uh, that trips some people up is that in this case, the ring finger is higher than the middle finger. And sometimes we have a tendency, I do, to draw that middle finger out until it's clearly the biggest. And uh, that's why we like to show it to everybody, right? Look at my middle finger. No, that's not why. Other reasons are why we show our middle fingers to each other. But in this case, wow, wow. we don't want it to be uh, too too <laughs> too big or too prominent. Um, it is actually in this position lower than the ring finger. So just check those types of things in your own drawings. And you can use horizontal or vertical lines or imaginary lines even. You can just do it in your mind um, to, to make those checks and comparisons. All right, there we go. Let me clean up my imaginary strings. And I think we're good to uh, start shading a little bit. And we can still make changes to the contours even while we shade if we notice that we need to do so. So I've still got, I've switched to the HB pencil. So it's just a little bit darker. I'm breaking it out after all, after saying I might not. And boy, does it feel a lot darker uh, as soon as I touch my page compared to the pressure I was using with the 2H. So there's a, not a whole lot of white, but there is some light that runs through the middle, sort of the middle of some of these fingers. So uh, I feel like I can almost shade the whole thing in. And we can see how, how dark all the values are compared to the white of the, of the paper that's around it. This is since, since the reference has no background at all. Um, okay, a couple things. Uh, Lord Engine says the lips are the most difficult thing to draw. Mm. John Singer Sargent agrees. John Singer Sargent said, a portrait is a drawing of someone that's something not quite right with a mouth or something yeah, like that. I'm yeah, paraphrasing I've, I've, that. I've heard that quote before. And he also is quoted as saying, every time I draw a portrait, I lose a friend. Like uh, every, so like something like a portrait is a picture of someone with something not right, quite right with the mouth. Right. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's um, it. So John Singer Sargent, one of the greatest figure painters of all time. For sure. Um, struggled with portraits. So uh, there you go. Um, and Keith says, do you recommend using the cylinder method to draw parts of the hands? Uh, there's, yeah. there's lots of different ways to draw subjects and uh, each artist will have their own preferred method. Uh, the reason why I said that I like the way Ashley's doing this is because th it's different than the way I would have drawn them. Um, the way I like to draw hands is using a step-by-step -step process where I draw a square for basically the palm or the mm. back side of your hand, a triangle for the part that connects that square to your thumb. And then I like to draw dirty green sausages, um, or I call them dirty green sausages, you know, in that movie Shrek, Shrek yeah, when yeah. Fairy Godmother says, don't you point those dirty green sausages at me? Or something like that, that was yep. horrible. Um, but I like to think of the fingers as sausage links and I draw the <laughs> uh, cylinders for the fingers. Um, and then of course on each regular finger, there are three little cylinders and for the thumb, there are two cylinders. Um, it's just a different approach. It's a great approach. I gave it, I gave that talk today. 
Oh yeah. The very same. Did you, you know, talk I about dirty green sausages? Like that, yeah. And we looked at the square the on the square. back. We looked at the triangle on the side. Yeah. Yep, and then yep. we added the added the cylinders. The to sausages. It. So <laughs> it's a yeah. I, I I'm going to stick with cylinders, but sausages works. And uh, so that is. Well, um, cylinders you know, is better, but sausages is rememberable. That's right. And rememberable isn't even a word. It's memorable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but I, I think that this particular layout of the hand is better suited for the approach that you're taking. With we all this space the square. that's in there. Right. The triangle isn't really a triangle shape. Uh, we can see the cylinders or the dirty green sausages, but um, we... You know, I, I like the way you carved out the negative shapes and, and so on. So I, I think the best answer to that question is do it the way that feels most comfortable to you. And there's lots of different ways to be right. Uh, there are there must be a ton of art instructors out there that are telling people that this is the way you do things. And I'd rather say this is a way you can do it. This is a way to do things. Yeah. Yes. There are, there are so many different ways to create and be successful. There are so many processes. In fact, I've seen a couple of videos. I'm not sure how people are doing this, where they're drawing uh, two different drawings with their right hand and their left hand at the same time. I, there's a girl that does two more with her feet. I've seen that too, but yeah. I still can't believe that's real. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's all hyperspeed. It could be edited. Yeah. And they're under the table and you can have a different, you know, like a different feed for what's happening below the right. table. Right. And I've seen like Instagram and mash or something. Them together. So, right. Who knows what's so real on So careful Instagram. with that stuff out there. Uh, um, but anyway, well, uh, first of all, the question is why would you do that? Yeah, right. And, right. Uh, but, but. Clicks. The, right. It's, it's amazing to watch if it is yeah, it real. Is, it is. Um, but other than that, what is the reason for doing that? I'm not really sure. Um. But there, that's a, just a different way, a different way, right? That's right. More uh, than one way to skin a cat. That's what my best professor would always say. And I love cats, but I know what he meant. You love cats. There's more than, yeah, I love cats. There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than way, one way to do things. That's what he meant. Oh, by skinning a cat. Yeah. He just used that. Would you ever skin your cat? No, gosh, no. No amount of money. I would skin you would you. never skin your I would cat skin for no you before I'd skin you. Would cat. Skin me? <laughs> that would take way longer than skinning your cat. You would have to have way more tools. More satisfying. More satisfying. Well, it would take longer, you know. It's a longer process. <laughs> I am Matt, concerned. have you ever skinned an I, animal? I, I, huh, have I ever skinned anyone? Skinned an animal? No. Okay, just curious. And listen, I I grew up in a, a lot of people rural do. area, believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, you did. That's why I kind of thought maybe, um, you, and uh, maybe you knew how I'm to I'm sure you guys didn't realize that. <laughs> All the comments I get on my accent. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, a lot of my friends hunted. Right. And probably, a lot of my probably family still did hunt. too growing up. So, so I, I went hunting one time. Yeah. And it was... Um, unsuccessful if you didn't skin an animal. No, well, if we were, we were shooting pigeon or doves. Oh, okay. Bird doves. hunting. Yeah. Dub, yeah. Doves. Birds of love. That's true. We were That's right. knocking them out of the sky. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Dove hunting. That I popular. didn't realize. You know, it's, it's, it was, it was a fun activity until the bird falls to the ground and is still alive. Oh, you then have you a, have it, to straight up murder the bird with your hands. With your it's hands, awful. I and I had I was gonna have no part in that. Yeah, uh, one of my friends was eager to do well, that. If you're gonna do that, why don't you like set a snare so you could, you know, that's the we reason can't you set a snare. That's in the, the reason sky. you use yeah, a, you know, the birds no, are flying not, in the sky. Not in the sky. Yeah, not for doves. Anyway, I'm, clearly I'm not a dove. Hunter. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't go hunt. I couldn't skin an animal. I, I just, uh, that's not me. And I'm yeah. very thankful for people who can do those things because those are necessities. Right. We want, we do want to eat. Right. Those are things that have that. to be done. Right. They have to be done. I've skinned a squirrel, and I was real surprised at how it ha how how you do it. You know, it's just it's, I, I don't hunt nowadays, folks something that just just really wouldn't want to do <laughs> but uh, i was similar to matt you know i was in a rural area and even when i moved to a city um you know i was from a rural area and i would go back and visit and uh and sometimes do a little small game hunting with my uncles and or my granddad and of course 
he liked to hunt quail and turkey and other birds like that. But yeah, uh, so I was part of a squirrel hunt one time that was successful, and uh, and a then squirrel had, hunt. Yeah, and then had to witness the and participate in the skinning, and uh, it was a different experience. And was that sure. fun? Was that exciting? Well, I don't hunt anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You know, squirrels, if you, I mean, if you went out in my backyard, you would, you'd have 12 squirrels to hit right there. And I, along with some chipmunks. Too, I right? have a cat that is an excellent hunter and I save squirrels all summer long. You know, I'll see him outside and he's, he's get he's about to get a squirrel or a chipmunk, mostly chipmunks. And I make a mad dash for the backyard to disturb his hunt. And boy, <laughs> does he give me the evil eye. Um, he in, does. He doesn't like that at all. I laughed out loud a few minutes ago because I was reading Jen's comment. Okay. Uh, when we were talking about the shooting of the doves. Okay. And she asked, did they cry? And in their own way. I'm, I'm sure if you want to know what it sounds like <laughs> when doves cry, just ask the, for, the artist formerly known as Prince. Oh. Because he knows doves what it cry. sounds like when doves cry. And I think that's what Jen was was getting at. That's why I laughed. I got it, Jen. <laughs> I I was a huge Prince fan. fan. I'm still a Prince. I say, fan, I'm a yeah. I'm a Prince fan. I can the, say that the best performance in the '80s. Prince, I didn't know you did. You just didn't know. I was like, is it Michael Jackson or is it Prince? Well, there was a rivalry. And there, my, you know? right, right. Yeah. And you felt like you had to pick a side. But, well, I didn't have to pick a side. I, I liked MJ and Prince. Yeah. Uh, but you know. People didn't realize how much of a great musician right, Prince was. Right, because he was such a good showman, you thought that he can't be really a seriously great musician. He can't and shred he, a guitar. And he, and it's he Prince. is. Right, and he he's, is. He's unbelievable. And if if you don't know, then look up the Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony with Prince in it. They play uh, when my guitar, uh, or, or while my guitar gently weeps, and it okay. is incredible, incredible. Um, anyway, so um, just to just to touch base on the drawing, yeah, I've pretty much just been <laughs> separating the light from the dark right now. So it's the shading is light, um, still lighter than what we have in our reference, but the purpose was mostly just to find the shades. And so, I mean, there's still a little more shadow down here, but uh, we pretty much found where the shades are and then everything that's still white are where the tints are. And so I'm um, going to just continue to build up the value and start to look for some nuance in the tints and shades um, as we go. So I've already started doing that a little bit. You know, there's a maybe two values happening in the, in the shadows um, just to start to find some of the parts. I don't think this... I don't think this uh, this tendon's in quite the right place. So now you're you're I'll with the HB pencil at this point, right? right? This is the HB pencil, and I think what I'm going to do, you know, this is an un, unplanned you're gonna drawing. To, you're going to have to go to two B. I'm going to switch back to the two H. Ooh, the two H for just a minute. Interesting. And just hit everything. I got you. And then and then and then go back to making. Yeah, because some of those darker. values are are super dark. Yeah, there's super dark values, and then some of the lighter values are so. so you know, so broad and expansive in areas um, that I'm afraid trying to control my pressure with the darker pencils is uh, going to going to be a little bit uh, less consistent. Um, I'm not really shading in a cross contour fashion. I'm going to shade in lots of different directions. So we would call that blending, where we use the different directions of our strokes to pull the separated values together. Um. No, I know, I know that I know who the song is by. Um, it, this is not the Super Bowl performance, and this is not a tribute to George Harrison. This was a rock and roll induction ceremony. Do they do and, this every year? Is it like every three years? I'm not sure how often they do it, I don't but think it's uh, it was um, quite a number of years ago. But uh, it, you just need to look up rock and roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, Prince. Just look that up. Not right now. No, no. I'm Don't go anywhere. Watch the finishing of the hand here. All right. Well, let's see. We got 17 minutes, so I think we're doing okay. Haven't got our subject covered yet, but we almost do. It's a little small victory.
Now, one thing, we're working from a reference, but another reason the hand is a good subject when you're using your own right there in the, you know, in live right there in your room um, is that it also encourages you to draw a little bit faster, you know, because your hand gets tired from sitting in the same position and you want, and of course, holding it in the same position for too long um, makes it tired. So it, again, you kind of get the benefit of a time drawing like this when you are working more um, from life and not necessarily from a photo reference. So another good reason to practice with your own hands sometimes. I mean, go just dig a coin out of your pocket. You can switch to your own hands. And how many people do you know that have coins in their pocket? <laughs> Nobody. When nowadays. was the last time you had coins in your pocket? <laughs> I'm not sure. I still buy things with cash. Or doubloons? Yeah, right, right. I wish. Excuse me, a, do you guys take doubloons? Oh, I'd be a much cooler person. <laughs> I could spend a doubloon. You could run into places like, uh, like uh, what's his name? Jack Sparrow. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're just falling down. Right. right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Wear a blouse. A puffy shirt. Right, and some eyeliner, and yep. just throw doubloons around everywhere you go. And it's raining doubloons. <laughs> yeah, you could create some art. <laughs> uh, all right. And we can't leave a, one of our darker darker elements out, and that is our coin. I, and I bet my brother gave this coin to my son from his uh, trip to Guatemala a couple years ago. Might be longer than that now. He he loved it. He had a great, great trip. He was filming a movie down there, so he was there for almost I think almost a month. All right. Well, that just gets something on there. I know it's much darker than that. All right. You have fourteen minutes left. All sir. right. Now we can start getting darker. So I'm going to switch to my two B again and go ahead and find some some darker values in the back of the hand, and then that'll hopefully guide us. Yeah, to... I'm glad you're switching to the 2B. Well, as long as you're happy. I'm happy. I'm also still a little scared you're going to skin me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't want to do it, Matt. I just would want to do that over skinning my cat. If I had to choose. That's still, that's still bothersome. It, that it, still is disturbing. It's still morbid. Yeah. Hands, oh, hands, you know, so many, so many skin folds and wrinkles. It's hard to know what you really need to include and, and what you can leave out sometimes. I like and the cross contour it. shading there. Doing a little I bit. I see it. A little bit. I see it. And you can see that in the skin. Well, if you look at the right. reference. That's what's directing me a little bit. You can see those little wrinkles are right. following the form of the hand. This is a great example of cross contour lines that we can actually see. Right. They may contribute a little bit to the form. Definitely will contribute to the illusion of form. We're not going to use a, a stump or anything, so we're just going to leave our, our marks the way we see them here. Or I am. You can use a can use a stump if you'd like. Okay, uh, a little bit of questions about uh, the designations on the graphite pencils. Okay. And uh, those designations refer to the softness or hardness of the pencil. Uh, so... You can think of an HB pencil as being right in the middle of the graphite grade scale, if it, you will. It's you, like your number two writing pencil. Right. Here in the United States, that would be a number two writing pencil. Um, but I would always teach my students the story of Hubert Bartholomew, HB, mm. and how he had two sides of his family. He had the B side of the family that was really kind of soft and let him get away with stuff. <laughs> And then he had the harder side of the family that's really tough on him and expected a lot from him. And that was the H side of the family. So extending out from HB, if you go harder, you're going to go to H, then 2H, 3H, 4H, 5H, 6H, and so on. 
and each pencil grade gets harder as the number gets higher. And that's what the that H stands for is hard. So harder pencils, uh, of course, they keep the tip longer. They keep a sharper tip longer, but they don't put as much graphite down on the surface, resulting in a lighter mark. While B pencils, the other side of Hubert Bartholomew's family, um, th those pencils are softer, and the B stands for black. Um, and they extend out B, 2B, 4B, or 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, so on. Um, and the number designation in front uh, gives you an idea of how dark that pencil is or how soft that pencil is. So a 4B pencil is softer and darker than a 2B pencil. A 2B pencil is softer and darker than an HB pencil, but lighter than a 4B pencil. A 2H pencil is harder and lighter than an HB pencil, but darker than a 4H pencil. So hope hope that helps everyone out there. Now somebody's going to go into their their pencil case and pull out an F. Right. I, I I think F stands for fine. Okay. And it is somewhere. It's close to an HB. Yeah, it's between like an HB and a 2H. It yeah. occupies that weird space. It may be like what white would be a number three pencil in a writing pencil. Or I have actually seen a number two and a half. So maybe it'd be more like that. So I'm not sure who would need the a, the F pencil, but anytime I have one, I feel like I won something. You know, so they're kind of unicorns out there. Rare. Yeah, Ryan pencils. Nebula brings up a good point. Uh, she says, I never go lighter than 4H, and I have to be careful not oh. to dig into the paper because yeah. harder pencils will put grooves and indentations in the paper. Yeah. Uh, softer pencils will pick up more of the texture of the paper. Uh, so if you're working on a textured paper, uh, like Ashley's paper is not super textured, but we can see the texture of the paper. Yeah, you can still um, see it. And if you want to eradicate some of that texture of the paper, you can actually put down your darker values where the texture is very evident with a B pencil and then go back with an H pencil and lightly cover the surface. And that actually reduces the contrast and reduces the look of the texture of that's the paper. Right. So that's, that's a true. little trick. Uh, a lot of times people think you just keep going darker and darker and darker, but you, at some point you can go dark and then go back light again to kind of uh, smooth things out especially if you're not using blending stumps or anything like that. All right, looking for smaller changes in the values and the lights. And there's some, the light wasn't direct, but there's a little bit of a shadow on both sides of some of these fingers, just much more strong, much stronger on the backs of the fingers. And if you're wondering what place F has in HB, Hubert Bartholomew's life, well, that's Uncle Frank. Mm. We don't talk about him. Yeah, we, nobody talks about Uncle no. Frank. Everybody, <laughs> maybe maybe you guys have an uncle like He that. doesn't even have a last name. You know, he's just F. He's just... And Jan says that 6H pencils are most useful as weapons. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a... Pretty hard piece of lead in there. I really don't ever use anything um, lighter than a 2H, or I find myself, maybe it's because my eyes are getting worse, um, bearing down a little little harder than I should, and that's when I make grooves. So I stop at, at 2F, I'm sorry, 2H for the same reason, grooves <laughs> in the paper. <laughs> Mark, Mark says Uncle Frank doesn't come to Thanksgiving anymore. Yeah, <laughs> Uncle Frank hasn't come to Thanksgiving for years, not since that incident in 83. But we're not going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> um, I know you've got about seven minutes left. Okay. And I think it would be helpful if you can zoom in a little bit closer. Okay. Because I think there's some details in the back of the hand that, at least in my screen, are lost a little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. All right. There we go. Oh. Yeah, we can see more of those wrinkles in the back of the hand. It's going to be one of those drawings that I'd like to start the timer over and go for another 45 minutes. Yeah, you could really, you could really spend a lot of time 
really on any subject. Um, but hands have a lot, a uh, lot going on there. Oh, there's a lot going on. We'll focus on just increasing our value range, I think. Keith brings up the point. Uh, Blackwing pencils ignore the B and H designations. Yeah, Blackwing That's makes true. their own pencils. And um, I have a video on Blackwing pencils and the different grades that they produce and how they kind of compare to the traditional graphite scale. They kind of go their own way. What do they call them? What do they call their... Did, how do they differentiate their... I think one's called smooth. Smooth. Um, That's it. I can't remember the names of the other ones. I've used them a few times. I'm really impressed with them. Yeah, me too. Uh, they're great pencils. They are expensive. Though. That's... Well, and they're, you know, they're made with the artists in mind. They have an eraser that you can pull out and make longer as it starts to wear down. Because they know that, the, you know, they know that erasing is part of drawing. And you have to have more eraser when you're drawing than when you're writing. Um, so they give you extra. Sonia wonders, do you always blend graphite? Um, no, personally, I don't usually blend graphite. I like to use a technique I, I like to call circling, mm -hmm. where I make very small circular strokes, not small circles, but small circular strokes. So there's it's, no hole in the middle. You know, there's there's not, no you, hole. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's just, no hole. Just circular motion. Um, over here and on the I tape, cover this technique. Like little, in, little tiny yes. circles like that. And I cover this technique in realistic pencil drawing, the course at Virtual Instructor. Um, and it is very time consuming, but it prevents any nasty smearing that happens with graphite. Graphite uh, is, you can blend with graphite, but I would always blend. And what I mean by blending is smudging. Uh, I would always smudge with a blending tool, like a tortillan or a blending stump instead of your finger for whatever reason graphite kind of bonds to the oils in your fingers and when you smear it with your finger pretty good. Here you can see a little bit got of a, that i got a little Let's silver hand it. here <laughs> um, don't have a paper towel so. and when you smear it on your paper it actually becomes very difficult to erase and remove and it can make your drawing look pretty messy uh, and uncared for uh, but using that circling technique gives you quite a bit of control, and you can actually make it look like it was blended, but you have total control over the value and the texture, too. Because when you smudge, uh, you're kind of flattening out the texture. Yeah, circling is something that I didn't really do until after I started teaching, and I saw other students doing it, kind of learned it from students. And it is slow, very slow, but it can look great. And you can use graphite in a very sketchy manner too. I think Ashley's drawing somewhere in between yeah, it's those two. Yeah, kind of sketchy tonight. Um, so you know, there's lots of different ways to do it. There. All right. Yeah. Um, Brenda points out there's a 602 Blackwing. I think that was my favorite pencil to use when I was using them regularly, which that lasted a few weeks, and then back to the lead holder. <laughs> Well, no, I use a lead holder sometimes too. It's been a while since I used a lead holder, actually. I've been using just the Derwent traditional pencils. Probably because my drawer over there is so disorganized, I probably can't find the Blackwing pencils in huh. there. <laughs> I usually just reach in and I've got my H pencils on one side and B pencils on the other, and I just grab whatever's closest and go with it in the little bin and uh, go with it. Yeah. And right. uh, the comments made uh, about, okay, uh, Ryan Nebula says, my take is it depends on blending. She's talking about when I did my granddad's portrait, he was wearing a Navy uniform. No blending on that at all to keep the texture of the wool jacket, but needed blending for the face to get the skin texture right. So that's a good Two point. Two different surfaces. I don't know if the 602 is the one that was going for $50 a pencil at one point. Uh, 
What? I do. I need to go home and see what I've got. Yeah, there was, I, I think I remember hearing that uh, or seeing that or it was actually a thing. But yeah, they were quite pricey at one point. Um, they, I think the, the, the biggest thing about the Blackwing pencils that I really like is the way it feels when you are using it in your hand. Uh, so I don't think there's anything particularly special about the graphite itself that will make your drawings better, but it does make the process of moving the pencil over the surface feel a lot better. Yeah, it's a high-quality pencil. If they're a little bit longer than normal pencils, you might like that. And Dale gives us the whole line here, Blackwing Pearl, Matte 602, and Natural. Mark asked, what does it cost in doubloons? And uh, <laughs> that would be 30 doubloons. So pretty, pretty expensive. Similar to a Bitcoin. In the power, power world. Doubloons. Not similar to Bitcoin. Bitcoins. Have you seen Bitcoin recently? Uh, I it's near actually, its high. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I was curious about that because I saw it was in the news again. And you have 30 seconds left. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Can hear the... Hear the game music speeding up in my head. I could do, you know, I if the, <laughs> you know what I think of is, you know, the Mario. That's game, right. Super that, Mario Bros. That was, that was, you know, I'm about to jump to the flagpole. And I thought, had a thought That's for a I'm moment. Thinking. I'll just put that on here. And then I thought, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you don't own the right no, the best to we that can, music. The closest we can get is me doing what I just did, I think. But you know dun, what? Dun, I can dun, dun, find dun, some dun, music dun. that sounds that way. And next week, but you know, next week I'm going to be doing the drawing. Yeah, so I definitely I, want some tense music playing when you're getting, approaching zero. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> we'll, start, we'll start that with you. All right. Well, it says time's up. But All right. I'm just going to hide the timer well, and let you I, continue. Because uh, we have time. It, I can you know, draw a little bit more. I feel like I'm in a pretty good place as far as it being evenly developed. Um, so that's good. Yeah. You know, if, you, if your artwork develops evenly, you can practically stop at any time and say it's finished. It just depends on how far you... You know, just evident as how far you were carrying it. So let's see. Brenda, I also so have nice. the Blackwing Sharpener somewhere over there. Um, I've used it a few times. I need to find that sharpener. It is a good pencil sharpener. I usually organize my drawer. I think the last time I organized that drawer was probably two years ago. So uh, well, it's, a, it's time. It's been a while. I can find stuff in it it's now. It's been a while. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's usable. <laughs> yeah. If you organize it, I won't be able to find anything. Uh, if I organize it. it. Wouldn't last very long anyway. And the next day, the stuff would be chaos everywhere. theory. It's all going right. to come back it's together. All, it's, it's all, all going to come chaos. back together anyway. That's how I live in yeah. chaos. Chaos theory. It's all right. It's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I like it. You the can definitely go, are correct. You can definitely go sure. darker in places, but we can still tell where the light's coming from. And uh, I like the little that little shadow I got in on the coin. It I feels think, pretty good. And I've got a few little dark accents in places that I think uh, give it some strength. I think there's one drawing. thing, and I'm going to give you a hint. Look towards the middle, and I think there's one wrinkle that will connect the thumb with the back of the hand. Let's see if you can find it. Dun, 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 what? Dun, 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 what is, dun, 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 what dun, is he talking dun, about? Dun, dun. A wrinkle into the back of the hand. <laughs> this one? Yes. Yeah, the fold there. Yes. I'll probably pump that up a little bit. Let's do that. You found it. You have won the game. Well, I found it earlier, but I think I've lost it a little bit. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. I think that is the one piece to make that part feel like the form it is. I'm going to redo it. And actually, that little spot might be the lightest place in the hand. I think it is. It probably I think is. that has the highest contrast. Yeah. Other than like the little white spot on the, on the ring, yeah. that, that little light spot there is probably our lightest value. 
in the actual hand. Lots of good comments here. Well done. Very nice, Ashley. Oh, looks thank, amazing. Thank looks you. great. Thank the you. hand is looking really great. Ashley, very nice. I like this approach. Ashley, thank you for showing so, this. Great exercise. Awesome job, Ashley. Nice work. Everyone push the thumbs up, uh, Mary Elizabeth says. Uh, amazing, Ashley. And of course, we started wrinkle... with a sock in the hand. <laughs> or a hand in a sock. A hand in a sock. <laughs> Got to take the sock off to reveal the hand. Yeah. Um, uh, Lord Engine says, a wrinkle, not just in the hand, but in time itself. <laughs> Very deep. Wrinkle in time. Very deep. Uh, Brenda says, I'm loving getting sketchy this season. I've been able to draw along consistently. Great. Awesome. Very good. And she goes on to say, this drawing is amazing. Lord, uh, Lord Engine says, yes, love the hand. It Thank looks you. great. Yeah, lots of fun. Lots of fun drawing the hand. Let's everyone five Ashley a hand. Kind of a Kind of a classic... A classic uh, sketch, the hand sketch. Mark says, well done. Clearly, you know it just like the back of your hand. Mm, and we've got four of my hands on the screen <laughs> at the same time. So I feel like an octopus over here. Well, you'd need four more. Um, ah, <laughs> maybe next week. <laughs> wonderful drawing, Ashley. All but right. he says, just starting to draw everything from getting sketchy. This is so great. Thanks, Ashley and Matt. Jim Weaver gives three thumbs up. One for each hand on the screen. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jim. We appreciate that. All right. I guess we'll call this one quits. Just do a little cleanup. I do have, you know, I didn't use paper towel or anything, so I do have some smudges and some some stray marks where I made changes, but I kind of like them. You know? Yeah, you know, for not using uh, anything over your hands, it didn't really smear that no, it's much. It's not too it's, bad. It's pretty good. Not too yeah. bad, yeah. Just a little cleanup right in here. Yeah, I think it looks great there. All right. There we are. I'll have to give you a hand for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I yep. appreciate that. And uh, the puns continue. <laughs> uh, five all uh, have to be handy to draw this well. Have mm -hmm. to be handy to draw this in. <laughs> and then Brazen Hearted found a hand. Oh, yeah, pink uh, hand. What are those? Are those emojis? emoji? A hand for Ashley. Well done. <laughs> Got to hand it to Ashley on this one. <laughs> Two for the normal hands. One thumb for the AI hand. <laughs> mm. And right. Enrique says, great job. Thank you, Enrique. So, All right. That one was fun. And that was, I think, Matt, I think this is my fourth drawing of the season. I think that's four for me. Yeah, so you got one more so left. So far, I've successfully... Yeah. I don't know if it's successful. You guys be the judge. But so far, I have um, taken my own photographs, my own references for this season. Well, so, good for you. No, and I'm not. I'm not throwing stones. You or are. Anything. No, I, it's, I'm not. Not <laughs> at all. Not at all. But uh, it was just a miniature goal for myself. Take your own references. And sometimes for me, Matt, it's faster to take my own reference it, than to find amen to just that. the right picture because I get a picture in my head, right, and then go to the internet. To search for it, and it, nothing ever quite matches. Right, I know. But yeah, you fall into an abyss of. I have endless, slammed my computer screen photos. hard before after looking for a picture for like two hours and just slammed it. And then you find one, you're like, I'm not so sure. Yeah, there might be one better out there. Always one better. Yeah, right? but it it is much better to take your own photos and uh, actually, yeah, I think only, it saves me the time. The only one I've used uh, for myself is the uh the ring pop this season i oh yeah i could not I really like that one a bee eater bird <laughs> no and i also still have no idea where that lighthouse is that i drew <laughs> well that's i mean you know i'm i'm have i'm i'm re restricted to doing things that are available to me you know mm -hmm. so so yeah there's subject matter that that we can't take photographs of ourselves that's why peter paul rubens um Lions and tigers look so weird. He'd never seen a lion or a tiger. Right. Yeah. Right? He was going off of people's descriptions and d probably domestic cats. Uh, didn't Russo do the same thing? I mean, uh, had to. Yeah. Had to. Yeah, those you know. were not very realistic tigers. Right. So we're lucky. Uh, so I guess my point is we're lucky we do have other folks' photographs to work from sometimes. Buddy from. wants to know, how did you take this photo? Well... <laughs> I held, <laughs> I held one hand like this, and I used my camera, and I, and then I've got some lights that I, um, you know, some lights with uh, like a softbox type cover over them, and just kind of moved it up and down, you know, moved 
the pole up and down until I kind of like where the light was coming from. So, and I would say this was probably my eighth or seventh or eighth photograph that I took before I got one that I liked. So, well, here at the end, we got a super chat. All right, Enrique. Enrique. Please, and more drawings like this. Yes, I love more drawings I love like it. this. I love that you love it. Yes. Yeah, this and, is classic, um, classic sketching right here. And there's a cheer for you. Um, and let's see. Um, I guess we're we're done here, right? Let's go ahead and switch over. Okay. Okay. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I certainly enjoyed watching that hand develop out of that mitt, <laughs> that sock. Uh, next week, I'll be doing the drawing. I guess that will be my fourth drawing this season. That's and, right. It'll be your fourth. Um, when when we set or when I sat down, I didn't have an idea, but I think you gave me an idea. Okay. For next week. All right. so oh, yeah, that's right. That. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I'm going to do that. That's a good one. So, now I've got to think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to do that? I'll, no. I won't uh, take yours. No, d definitely not. Um, In fact, I wish you the best because uh, well, it's you. something I've struggled with. <laughs> <laughs> so um, next week, I'm not going to reveal the subject matter yet, but I do think I'm going to return to charcoal. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did charcoal, mm -hmm. and um, I really love the medium of charcoal. And if you are if you're afraid of charcoal um, because it, you think it's difficult to control, don't don't be. Um, but that's what we're going to be using next week. I'm 98% uh, convinced I have the image in my mind, but I have not photographed anything. And I know there's no way I'm going to be able to find it. So no, um, you'll need to, you'll need to do this one yourself. Yeah. It should be a pretty good challenge. And the, um, and controlling the light will give you some real opportunities with this subject. Right. Mind. And what's behind it. Yeah. Cause I'm going to mm. put stuff behind it Ooh. too. So. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> no, I just changed my mind. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to do what I was kidding. Mary Elizabeth says, feet. No. We're going to draw a distorted hand, also known as a foot. Tonight. Listen, if if you haven't spent time drawing feet and hands, um, I have quite a number of lessons on drawing hands and also uh, drawing feet. And one of the videos, I draw lots of feet. <laughs> lots of different angles so uh, you can look for that on the website over at the virtual instructor.com i think that video is also on youtube somewhere uh, but uh feet and hands you can find that there feet and it's not going to be feet we're not we're not drawing feet next week especially not my feet not gonna <laughs> um <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're going to wrap things up. Ashley, do you have anything else for everybody? Um, I don't have anything left. I'm all gassed out, but I hope I see you here next week. Same time, same channel. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you next week, unless we're going to see you on the live feed that follows Oh, yeah, that's right. For members. 20 minutes. Uh, for those of you who are members, I uh, hope you'll join us for the live lesson uh, that follows at 8 o'clock. So about 20 minutes from now mm -hmm. and we'll continue scratching away on our scratch board etching engraving whatever you want to call it of uh, that big huge b so uh, all right with that we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening if you like this video make sure you give it a like and if you haven't subscribed to this channel uh go ahead and subscribe it, we're it's getting real close to a million subscribers i think it would be awesome to have a million subscribers and but in order to do that, you got to push that subscribe button and also the notification bell. Uh, so help us out with that. Matt, have you created any incentive for hitting a million subscribers? Something zany you're going to do when you hit a million subscribers? Um, I think I do enough zany things here, <laughs> okay. but um, maybe we could skin a cat, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. We'll just hang it up in the tree <laughs> as long as it's not mine. Um, no, but I'll think about that because I do think it would be fun to do some kind of yeah crazy million subscriber thing. Mm -hmm. But I just not really sure. I haven't really thought about it. You know, I yeah. haven't really thought about reaching that. Yeah, or or some sort of giveaway for the one millionth subscriber. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> right, of course, of course. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll think about that. Uh, if you got an idea, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. 
as long as it's not too crazy. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and, and sign off for real here. Uh, good night, everybody.